Hello guys, Arjid here and welcome back to another modeling tutorial with Cubic Studio for Minecraft. This is episode 6 and today I'm going to cover the general settings and the model settings of Cubic Pro. So let's head stri uh, straight into this. Um, go here to model settings if you want to actually do something with this. Um, and let's say, uh, le let's go to the general tab which is the most left. Uh, first of all, we have name here, and the name of the model, uh, it's not really that much, but if you're doing repetitive work, this will be useful. So let's change this to uh, a model, and if I now click OK, and then go to export, which is right here, uh, and then you can see that a model actually appears right here. So if you're making a model multiple times and seeing if it looks right or not, uh, you could change that and it will make exporting just a little bit quicker, uh, if that is your thing. Next is description. The description is actually when you export your model, your it is right here. So this is like a model that is actually this model that you can see right here. And you can see that there's a comment here on top here. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger. I'm um, not sure if I can. Okay, I'm um, <laughs> not really sure how to do that. Uh, but basically it says comment here and then designed by RGG with Cubic Studio and then a link to Cubic.studio, which is the website for Cubic Studio. And you can see that the same text is right here. So that is basically the text that is um, like a watermark basically on your model that is right there. So you uh, people know who made it or and where to go. You can modify this fully with links and everything else in it and it will work uh, just fine. Next is the global options. These are uh, very simple. Uh, you can basically exclude elements, voxels, meshes. Um, and basically model uh, elements, that is, that's what you see right here, those are used for Minecraft. But if you're into other things as well, you can use voxels, which are basically little cubes that fill up these little grids. Uh, and meshes are spheres, cylinders, and all kinds of co cool shapes. You can, if you click that, you can see a whole bunch of things right here. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's the meshes. Um, only the elements export to Minecraft, so don't be hyped to exporting sh uh, spheres to Minecraft. You can't. Um, you need to convert those first if you really want to do that. Um, but what you can do, you can click on exclude and then they will not go to the exporter. So the exporter won't actually uh, take those into account. Next is the minify and compress data. I haven't really played around with this, but what it does it is it compresses your model to a smaller file size. I don't know if that actually makes it look worse um, in any case, but if you are making a big model and you want to export it and make it more efficient, uh, try and click this for once and see if it actually gets better or not. Uh, definitely is something you want would want to check out if you're doing that. Next is the elements options here, and the elements options are about the elements here. Um, and what you can do is you can avoid Z finding and for those I have a little demonstration here You probably have seen that those uh, faces here. They look a little bit strange and when I move around it's even worse um, This is basically what we call in computer programming and other things. We call this Z fighting They are on the exact same face. So on the exact same coordinate there um, And the computer doesn't really like that. It has to render two colors on one pl uh, one place um, Yeah, that's not possible. So it's estimating which color is most present uh, probably I'm not sure but it's something it does um, and as I said that's because they are on the exact same face so you could actually uh, go somewhere here and move this uh, outwards a little bit and then you can see that it doesn't happen but it is now moved outwards so it, that's a, a far bit actually so if you click that setting it will do actually a very very small amount so if that is coordinate 1 then it will move it to coordinate 1.001 or something like that so it's a very very small change but it will remove the Z fighting which is very great so you can click that and it will do that if you're having issues with Z fighting um, and you don't really want to mess up your model and uh, then there's avoiding bleeding textures and this is actually a really difficult one to demonstrate so um, there's probably a few people with a very uh, high resolution monitor that can actually see this but um, when I zoom into this model this these the two cubes here or square uh, rectangles rhombuses I should say you can see there's a few red pixels here and if I move to the green one uh, there's a few ooh, where am I? <laughs> There's a few blue pixels right here. It's very hard to see. So I'm uh, very sorry, but I can't really demonstrate this any better. Um, basically, what that is, is that is the bleeding textures. I probably have an image on screen that shows this a little bit better than the, than this, but that's uh, basically what that is, and it will avoid those by um, just modifying the UV mapping. So that's the, uh, the color uh, settings here. Uh, of a model by uh, just a slight bit so it doesn't happen so um, by clicking this UV mapping you can also see that this red one uh, or the, the yellow uh, rhombus here it uh, has the texture meeting with the red here so therefore it, it applies that red texture here as well 
uh, a little bit that's just how uh, how the computer does that it's very strange it's very minimal in minecraft you uh, in a cubic you probably didn't even notice it at all uh, if i hadn't said it but in minecraft it's a little bit more obvious so it's definitely something to look out for if you really want to um, if you're doing this like so um, next up let's get the settings again um, there's exclude hidden elements and this is actually very useful I recommend clicking that uh, by default actually uh, let's say you have uh, made a cube out of uh, faces so uh, something like that and there's something inside that can't be seen ever uh, if you are like holding the model rotating it you can't see the inside anyway so if you put something inside then Cubic will be really smart and remove that model from the export not from your here but when you're exporting it it won't actually export that one which is very great so you can exclude that by this uh, do mind that if you have a, a semi transparent or transparent texture that you will actually be able to see the inside in Minecraft but Cubic will still think that you won't be able to because a texture is a texture uh, how transparent it may be um, so then it will um, affect your model so do keep in mind if you're using transparent textures here next we're on to the Minecraft model properties and the parent here let's leave that alone for now and the type same thing that has to do with uh, this here and you can see that I've clicked some by default uh, this one is the ambient occlusion occlusion uh, is clicked by default is ticked by default and um, it's very it's very hard to explain what it does and it doesn't even have a very great effect in Minecraft but as I said it's on by default I would leave it on by default but I do have a little video of tech wiki uh, that explains to you how that actually works so if you're interested in that it has to do with shading of objects and default shading uh, if you're interested in that or really want to see if you can optimize your model uh, then definitely watch that video it's only five minutes of your time and I think you have a little bit far of more five minutes if you're really making models that are using this next is the vanilla display settings I'll cover those last because they're a little bit difficult uh, then there's custom display settings uh, I'll click those and when I now go to preview and if you were following my tutorials you haven't actually seen this uh, but preview is basically what the model looks like in Minecraft um, and normally these presets here is not there um, but if you click that model it is there you can add some custom presets and all kinds of things but it does make the whole thing a little bit less uh, or more difficult and uh, to understand for newbies uh, so I guess that's the reason why it's not on by default uh, otherwise I would not know at all um, so yeah there are presets you can add them yourself as well if you want to um, I'm not going to go any deeper into that uh, next there's override settings and basically what that does is if you're having a preview then it will override the settings that it already had there so um, that way if you change something it won't actually change um, not a too big of a thing but something to keep in mind when you're using this uh, I'm going to untick those for now and then there's vanilla display settings the last thing I'm going to cover in this video uh, when I click this you can see that the parent here changes and then when I go to item you can see that it changes to something else and PE entity will probably make it uh, come on uh, no it doesn't change those but um, let's actually go over these two right here let's say that you have um, a block uh, you made a block here and um, you don't actually have to select one of those if you're not using this setting but let's say you made a block uh, or something that's going to replace a block rather then um, you probably want some settings to apply to a block that you don't want to a model like something shading and it's probably different for items and blocks so if you click this it will uh, inherit that shading for items handheld that is uh, and for blocks so um, again if you are really into making beautiful models <laughs> that they are out there I must assure um, then look into this it's something that uh, I can't really show that well but it's something that is really worthwhile exploring uh, if you're making something good um, so yeah that's basically what that does I hope you learned something from this if there is anything that is not really clear then please do comment um, in the description and if you did enjoy and uh, learn something here then please leave a like and maybe a subscription that would be really appreciated thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one guys bye